Hey y'all, how's it going? So today I have something incredibly exciting. So we are having a look at ChatGPT inside Maya, thanks to Zoo Tools. I cannot wait to show you guys this. This is magic. Oh my God, let's get to it. Okay, so we are inside Maya right here, completely blank, there is nothing. And this is on purpose. So uh, Zoo Tools is right here. Once you install it, it's a simple drag and drop. You 100% should check out their tools. I'll leave a link down below because they're incredibly useful for all modeling, animation, lighting. I've done a video previously on Zoo Tools here in the channel. It was a small introduction, but hopefully gives you guys a little bit of a preview of what's possible. Very, very good tool set. Shout out to everybody that works on these tools because you guys do an amazing job. What has happened since I actually showcased that that um, demo was that Zool Tools 2.7.6 came out. So I think the one I installed or the one I tried was 2.7.1. Now on this specific, a new version of Zoo Tools, if you go under developer, there's a little thing here called Zoo Chat GPT. You must have heard of Chat GPT if you're actually here on Earth, uh, because uh, everybody has. And I think that this might be a preview of things to come in the future. And this is why I think that most of you should actually have a look at this, because I do think that this is really important. It's almost like a staple for animation. And I have a feeling, and this is, don't quote me on this, but most likely most companies like Autodesk and Adobe and all that stuff will eventually add something similar to this into their software so people can just type some stuff and things happen. So have a, let's have a look at this. Let, I'll stop teasing you. When you click this button for the very first time, normally you have to install uh, the ChatGPT API. Now you can get that by clicking a button that actually showcases on the box to make sure that you can actually go and get your API. Now I'm actually right now uh, paying a small amount, I think it's like two, two to four dollars just to showcase this, but I normally don't pay for this. I normally don't use ChatGPT very much. I've used it just to test out a few things and to get my head around what it is, but I don't, don't normally use it. However, this way I can actually see myself using it much, much more. Now, this is basically what you get from the get go, just a blank window, nothing much happens. However, if you have tried chat GPT before, the only thing you have to do, enter a command and then things happen. And if you enter a command about create a code that makes the character walk in Unity, then it will actually kind of like spit out a bunch of code. This is basically what happens here. So I'm just going to show you guys something super simple. So create a sphere, uh, sphere with a five centimeter diameter, right? like that. Hopefully I spell, I, spell, I spell that right. So if I press send, it will query chat GPT and basically go like, if you actually add this thing here, it will actually create your sphere. The only thing you have to do after that is basically go here and execute. And just like that, you have a sphere. Now you might think, why do I need that? I can just create, go here, create and polygons, cube, sphere, whatever, and I can do it. There's no point. However, this is incredibly useful when you start kind of like complicating things a little bit more, right? So if I go create 20 spheres, spheres uh, of five centimeter diameter, 10 centimeters apart. Okay, so create 20 spheres of five centimeter diameter, 10 centimeters apart. So I'll go send, like to create the, the spheres, you have to do that. So same thing, it kind of spits out a, piece of, a, bit of, a bit of code and it tells you that this will create what you want. Press play and look at this. Now you have 20 spheres separated five centimeters apart. And that would actually take a long time because <laughs> you have to actually kind of like, you know, control C, control V, separate them, and they will probably not be 10 centimeters apart. Yeah, unless you actually kind of like have them like snapping to something. So this is incredibly powerful. It's really, really, really cool. And what I, th what I think is best is that at the moment, obviously you won't be able to do animations for you, but it will be able to actually kind of like do certain commands at a very simple rate, right? So I do think that this can be an addition to a workflow more than actually create a workflow. 
Now, where I can see this is powerful is that anything that is repetitive for you as an animator, as a modeler, as, um, um, I don't know, physics person, um, anything that is repetitive, you can basically get ChatGPT to actually do it for you. Anything that is very simple, but requires a bunch of clicks, this is the best way to actually get about, go about it right now. Like as you saw, I created 20 spheres, exactly the same, equidistant, In it took me like one click to do. And that is incredibly powerful. Is this good? Is this bad? I don't know. <laughs> this is what people are thinking about right now. Is this going to take over our jobs? Is this going to be a positive thing? I don't know. I just know that this is incredibly cool and it cannot be dismissed. And I do think that the, the fellows behind Zoo Tools get it and they're trying it. And this is a really good and simple implementation to actually make the most out of ChatGPT. This will probably explode in something much more complex and allows you to actually kind of like be a bit more uh, flexible with what you do. Like one of the things that I think is the best is basically creating UI. I always wanted to actually have UI for the things that I want the most. As a humble animator that knows absolutely nothing about scripting, what I normally do when I want to save a piece of scripting or um, want to kind of like have a button somewhere that I can press. I normally go somewhere like, I don't know, like see uh, red nine and then simple snap. And then I basically go control shift and then I click a button. And if you notice here, you will actually put that button there, right? So this is how I save my buttons. I save in the shelf, all that stuff. In an idea world, if I could do it, I would actually create a UI with a button that it does a thing, right? And ChatGPT here on the Zoo Tools um, actually can create that for you super simple. So just like I created a sphere, I can actually go and say, uh, create a Maya window with uh, two buttons. Uh, and the window should be oh, two buttons for sphere and uh, cube and the width, sh the width <laughs> and uh, and it and it should be 200 pixels wide. So let's see what I get, like what we get. Here's a code to create a Maya window with two buttons for Spherian's cube with a window of 200 pixels. So it gives me this stuff and if I press play, look what I get. I get a little window with sphere and cube. Now, when I click it, I get a sphere. And when I click it, I get a cube. Isn't that magical? That is insane to me. As somebody that doesn't know how to code, that is magic, right? I'm pretty sure the coders looking at this may be like, yeah, I can do that faster than ChatGPT can do it. For me, I can't, I really can't. And this is magic because I'll be doing this for any shortcuts that I have going forward because I can actually use this window anywhere I want. I can I can just like have it here. I can save it somewhere. It's cool. I can copy the, the, this piece of code and actually keep it somewhere safe, right? Like I can copy this, put it on the shelf, and now I have this separated window that I can move about anywhere I want. That is special to me. That's it. That's two simple examples on how I go about using this tool by Zoo Tools. Now, once again, major shout out to everybody behind Zoo Tools because I know that they put a lot of work for us to actually use these tools. So 100% check them out on the link below on their website because they deserve your attention, especially when they think out of the box just like this. So comment down below and let me know what you think about this. Do you think this is something positive? Do you think this is something negative? Do you think this will actually get animation and modeling and just like, you know, take it and just throw it down the drain and because people won't be able to actually do anything for themselves? Or do you think that this is an aid to a workflow to make you slightly faster, to get results faster? I'm super interested to hear what you think. And I really want to chat with you guys about this below because I really want to know, gather overall, how people feel about having ChatGPT inside Maya. Because, uh, yeah, it's the beginning of a new phase for this world, for this AI world, for sure. <laughs> cool. That's all I had for you guys, nice and short. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. And until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.